I know you're broke, Pat. It's all good. It's not what it's about. Share away. Tell all your friends with kids. Welcome to Storytime with Shane on you, friends. Hopefully some of you were here yesterday with me. Um, at the end of the show, we made cars out of cardboard boxes, be it for yourself or be it for a stuffed animal. I couldn't find one big enough for myself, but I did want find one big enough for Stormtrooper Trey. So here he is in his car. Told you all I'd show you. Here it is. Room, room, room. Okay. Hi, guys. So there, there it is. There's the car I made. There's the front. There's the back. There she be. It's my car. So anybody else who make cars, I'd love to see your pictures. Or if you're going to make a car, I'd love to see that too. Meanwhile, Trey's going to go for a drive. And we're going to get the show on the road. Let's get at her. Those of you who have... is Oh, wait. Just came back from a, a job. Gotta take my gun out. My fake gun. Just so y'all know. Wow, there was smoke coming out of that. I want to do that again. Look at that. Can you guys see that smoke? Too cool. Anyhow, enough with the toys. Let's get at her. So if this is your first time joining, this is Shane on You, story time with Shane on You. Um, we always start out our story time with a fact, so we can get a little education in as well. Let's start with our fact for today. And I've decided to go with a one that I found very interesting. I haven't read it yet, but I want to know. So, we do our facts from... The National Geographic Kids, Little Kids First Big Book of Where by Jill Esbaum. It's a great book, lots of great facts in here. It's a lot of fun. I picked this up at Walmart. I'm sure you can get it anywhere. And the one I decided to go with today is... Turn you guys a little bit so Facebook's facing the right way. Instagram's a little harder to get the whole picture in. But I will show it up close. So let's do it. Love the hat? Yeah, it's a cool hat. It's my hat. It's not the one I wear when I go actually into the SWAT house. I wear a helmet. But because I had a helmet on earlier when I went in to do the SWAT team uh, extraction, which is what we did earlier, um, my hair was a mess, so I thought I'd throw on something nice for y'all so you wouldn't have to look at my messy hair. So here we go with our fact for the day. And... It is, where is the world's highest bridge? Ooh, so exciting. I love bridges. I don't know about you guys. Man, these names are not easy to pronounce, and I butcher them every time, but whatever. I'm going to give it a try. The Dung Dang Penpongyang Bridge in southwest China is the highest in the world, and I know I butchered that, but I tried is the highest in the world. It rises over 1,800 feet or 565 meters above the, I want to say, Baipan River. Um, that's so high you could almost stack two, two of Francis Eiffel's towers underneath it. Wow. Two of them. That's tall. That's crazy tall. Then, so that's this one over here. I'll show you guys a picture of that, and then we'll move on to the next one. Look at that bridge. Look at the chasm it's over. Like, I don't know. All right. So we're going to move over to the other side here. And the Moses Bridge in the Netherlands doesn't go over water. It goes right through it. Whoa, that's kind of cool. Uh, London, England is home to... The rolling bridge. Once a week, operators unroll the bridge so people can walk over it uh, over the Grand Union Canal. Oh, that's kind of cool, too. Pakistan's Husseini Hanging Bridge, made of ropes and wooden boards, should be crossed one careful step at a time. 
So we'll go here, and this is the Moses Bridge, and this is the one that's right in the river. See, the river's banging up against it. It's a little crazy. I don't know if you guys can tell in the picture, but look at that. Wow. Then we have down here the Rolling Bridge, which is right here. So they roll that out so people can walk across it once a once. What did they say? Once a week or once a month? Once a week. Once a week they roll it so people can walk right across the canal. That's kind of cool. And then, oh, here it is all rolled up. So that's what it looks like rolled up. And then when they roll it out, that's what it looks like. Kind of cool. Then over here, we have the rope bridge. It's not the best picture of it. It's really far away, even in the picture. So you kind of have to look really close. But that's people on the bridge right there. So that's the bridge, and there are people walking across that bridge. Yeah, no. Can't see. I, be, I wouldn't be going on that one. No, no way. So... Where is the world's highest bridge? So we now know it's in China. Um, so what is the highest bridge that you've crossed? I don't even know what the highest bridge I've crossed is. The one that comes to mind and the one that I crossed the most, and it's not high as in world terms, but it was the highest I'd ever been on, was the uh, bridge in Fort McMurray, the green one. So, yeah, that's the one I remember. All right, let's see if there's any kids out there. Did anybody put any kids' names up? If you haven't yet, you should. And I will give them a shout-out. And Pat, if you're still there, I'll give you a shout-out, too, if my sister's still there. Hi, Jody. How about over here? What kids we got over here? We're all here. Hi, Cage. Hi, Scarlett. Hi, Tegan. Hi, Mia. Glad to have you all here. Just came back from a SWAT mission. So, we're about to move on to our first book. We just did our fact. My sister, my big sister, waved hi. She's on Instagram. Love it. Love it. All right. So the book I'm going to start with today was donated to me by my good friend, Kathy. Um, and it is, Can I Be Your Dog? by Troy Cummings. Let's get at her. Can I be your dog? Oh, and then this is just all stamps. And there he is on the big front page. He's cute. Dear people at Yellow House. Woof. Can I be your dog? I'm potty trained and I have my own squeaky bone. Also, I love to play. I see you have a cat, but I'm willing to work with you. Woo's a good dog. I am. It says who's as he's howling it. Who's a good dog? I am. Sincerely, Arfie. P.S. I know every house on Butternut Street, but I asked you first. See, there's the yellow house that he wrote the letter to. Dear Arfie. We're so sorry, but you cannot be our dog. Our cat is, um, allergic to dogs. Good luck in your search. The Honeywells. Oh, look how sad he is. Dear Butcher Lady, can I be your dog? I think your butcher shop would be a great place for a puppy like me. I could keep the floor nice and clean. Arfie. See, he signed it. The chop, chop, butcher shop. Say that a bunch of times real fast. Chop, chop, butcher shop. Chop, chop, butcher shop. 
Okay, that's all I'm going to try before I mess it up. Look, pal, I've got a bone to pick with you. Last time I let you let a dog into my shop, a dozen meatballs went missing. Sorry, but there's no way I'm taking in a pooch. Veronica Shank Butcher. P.S. No hard feelings. Enjoy these dry driblets, giblets, and good luck finding a home. Nom, nom, nom. Well, at least he enjoyed them. It's sad, but he got some giblets. Dear Fire Station number five, can I be your dog? I can fetch your boots. Plus, let's just say you I know my way around a fire hydrant. I've sniffed, sniffed out every single one on Butternut Street, and yours is the shiniest. Arfie. See, look, he signed it again. There's the fire department. Hall number five. Dear applicant, thank you for your interest in working with the Butternut Street Fire Station. Unfortunately, the position of fire dog has already been filled. We will keep your letter on file. Best wishes in your search. Station number five. Oh, what's he doing there? Marking territory. No, it's not a real SWAT uniform cage. Sorry. It's a costume that I got at the costume shop. Another plug for my place of employment. So yeah, marking territory here. And the letter. Look at that. I just noticed he's peeing on the letter. Dear Junkyard Guy, I'm not going to lie, you're my next to last choice, but these past few days have been rough. Rough, rough, rough. So please, can I be your dog? I don't eat much, and I can bark at people that try to steal your junk and stuff. Hopefully yours, Arfie. Dear Mutt, get lost. Oh, that wasn't very nice at all. Not at all. Dear Last House on Butternut Street, can I be your dog? I see that your yard is full of weeds and your windows are broken. And there's a funny smell, but I'm not picky. Just lonely. Arfi. Kind of a scary looking house. Oh. Oh no. Arfi soggy box in the alley. Return to sendy return to sender. Nobody at this address. Oh no. Arru Everybody do their best dog, sad howl. Oh my, oh my, these are dark pages. Oh, the sun, sun, look at that. Sun came out the next day. Oh, Arfi, two Arfi. Oh, what's this? Dear Arfi, can I be your person? I need a friend who will be there with me no matter what. Snow, rain, heat, or gloom of night. And I see that you're, you already know everyone on Butternut Street. I know you'll make a first-class partner. With hugs and head scratches, Mitzi Whipple, letter carrier. P.S. If you agree, 
Meet me at the big blue mailbox. <gasps> How exciting is that? That is fun. There she is, waiting at the big blue mailbox. I don't see Arfie. Do you guys see Arfie down the street? I don't see him yet. My, oh my. <gasps> oh, there he is! Oh, he's just coming to bound it with the letter in his mouth. And there they are together. How cool is that? Oh, so happy. Dear Mitzi, you know what? My tail has been wagging ever since I got your note. My answer is yes. <laughs> Truly yours, Arfi. P.S. Woof. Scritch scratch. Yay for happy endings. <laughs> oh, well, look at this. I don't know if I read this last time. There's a little information here from Arfi to go out to everyone. So let's see what Arfie has to say to everyone. Here's how you can help a homeless animal. Adopt a shelter animal instead of buying a pet. Volunteer at a shelter or a pet adoption event. Spay or neuter your pet so there will be fewer fur babies to find a home for. Donate your local animal, donate to your local animal shelter or national animal, animal advocacy group such as the Humane Society, or the SPCA. Um, extend a helpful paw, paw so all animal friends can find their forever homes. Arfi, too cute. Signed it again. Oh, such a good book. Such a good book. Can I be your dog? Yes. All right, one book down. Did I miss any kids out there? If you got kids out there, throw the kids' names up and I'll say, I'll give them a shout out. Make sure I didn't miss anybody while I was reading. Nope, we're good there. All right. Yeah, sorry about the cage. It's not a real SWAT outfit. I'm not a real SWAT fighter. Um, but I do like to play Make Believe. So earlier today, I was pretending that I was at a SWAT mission. And I had, like, you know, I was ready to go. I was good to go to get the bad guy. Got her done. So, all right. Let's move on to our next story. I'm saving our rainbow story for last. So you have to stick around to hear one of our rainbow books. Um, but this one is a classic, a favorite, award-winning book. So I'm kind of excited. It's my first time reading it. So we'll see how I make out. Not my first, I, yeah, my first time reading it to you guys. So it's a new book from me to you. And many of you will know it. Where the Wild Things Are. Story and pictures by Maurice Sandak. All right, here we go. It's the winner of the Caldecott Medal. For the most distinguished picture book of the year. You can see it's award on there. It's even got a little award on there. So we all know. But I knew it was a great book before that. Where the wild things are. It's the beginning. Fabulous. The night Max wore his wolf suit, feels like there's a page, sorry, it feels like I missed a page, but I didn't. All right. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made, and made mischief one of a kind, there he is in his wolf suit. I love the drawings in this book, man. Oh. made a one of a kind and another there he is chasing the dog his mother called him wild thing 
and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. With a scowl on his face. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. Look at that. Can you imagine? Trees started growing in your room and grew. And grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. Look at that. Doesn't look like a room anymore. Great imagination. I love imagination. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max, and he sailed off through the night and day. There he is in his boat. And it even says Max on the front of the boat. And in and out of weeks, and almost over a year to where the wild things are. He's on a mission. That's a long travel. Look at that guy. Cool. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. I don't know, they don't look that terrible. Kind of cute if you ask me. Till Max said, be still, and tamed them with the magic trick of staring into their yellow eyes without blinking once, and they were frightened, and they called him the most wild thing of all. Look at that. See him there? Got them all mesmerized. It's great. And made him the king of all wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. Dun, dun, the wild rumpus. Na, na, na. These pages are thick. Oh! Do, 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 do. Oh, here's some more. Look at Max. Oh my, they're having so much fun. Oh, and more. I want to go where the wild things are. As long as I can come back. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then, all around, from far away and across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being the king of where the wild things are. Now I'm hungry. Talking about food, but look at him. I like his crown. Makes me want to put mine on. One of mine. But the wild things cried. Oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We'll love you so. And Max said, no. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. See him over there waving goodbye?
and sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day. And into the night of his own, very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. Aww. See it over there? That's his supper. Big glass of milk. And it was still hot. Go figure. Ta-da! Is it really the 15th? I'm just checking to see when this was copyrighted. Copyrighted. Huh. 15th anniversary edition winner of the Cole Cop medal. So I got this as an anniversary edition, but yeah. Definitely a good one to have in my collection. Some award-winning art in there. Book number two down. How we doing? Any more kids out there I need to say hi to? Did I miss anybody? No, I think we're still good. We're still good. And any over here? No, we're still good. All right. Does any kids out there I haven't said hello to or adults or anybody you want me to say hello to? Let me know. I will. Moving on to our last book, one of my favorites, um, donated to me by the Oak Tooks Public Library, and then my big sister bought it for me, so I got to add it to my own personal collection, which makes me so happy. My collection is getting bigger. So here is one of my favorites, too. I have a lot of favorites, but this is one of them, and this is from the Rainbow uh, Collection of books. So it's Worm Loves Worm, and I know a lot of people love this one. So, let's get at her. I'm so glad to have this. I have so many good books now. When Worm meets a special worm and they fall in love, you know what happens next? They get married. But their friends want to know who will wear the dress and who will wear the tux. The answer is, it doesn't matter, because Worm loves Worm. This irresistible picture book is a celebration of love in all its splendid forms. Agreed. Worm Loves Worm by J.J. Austrian. Yep, Austrian. And Mike Carrado. Worm Loves Worm. Let's be married, says Worm to Worm. Yes, answers Worm. Let's be married. Aren't they cute? Wait, says Cricket. You'll need someone to marry you. That's how it's always been done. I'll marry you. Sorry, but some traditions are meant to be broken. Now can we be married? Asks Worm. Wait says Beetle Shane. Oh, those of you who know, I'm, I've created... This is Beetle Shane because he has the same mustache as me. See his mustache? He has the same mustache as Shane. So this is now Beetle Shane. Okay. Wait, says Beetle Shane. You've got to have a best beetle. Naturally, that would be me. Look how sophisticated he looks. Yeah. Some good friends, though, eh? Now can we be married? asks Worm. Wait, 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 say the bees. You'll need bride's bees. Can we be the bride's bees? Please, please, please. Yes, says Worm. Now can we be married? Did the beetle land with me? Shaping up to be a good little wedding. 
Now you'll need to get rings and wear them on your fingers, says Cricket. That's how it's always been done. But we don't have fingers, says Worm. We can wear them like belts, says Worm. Wonderful, says Worm. Now can we be married? I mean, it looks good there. Why not? As long as it doesn't hurt. Just make sure you have a band so we can dance, says Beetle Shane. But we don't have feet to dance with, says Worm. We can just wiggle around like this, says Worm. Fun, says Worm. Now can we be married? Look at me over here, looking dapper. Dapper is all. Yes. But you still need a white dress, a tuxedo, a top hat, and lots and lots of flowers, and a cake with frosting, say the bees. But we don't have heads for hats, says Worm, or hands to hold flowers. And we only eat dirt, says Worm. Wait, says Spider. I can attach the hat and flowers to you with my sticky web. Thank you, says Worm and Worm. I really like this teamwork. Like I always say, teamwork makes the dream work. But who will eat the cake, asks the bees. I can eat the cake along with Cricket and Beetle, says Spider. What did you say? said Cricket and Beetle. Shane? Nothing, Spider says with a smile. Now can we be married? says Worm. But which one of you is the bride? asked the bees. We, can, we can't be. How can we be brides, bees, if we don't know who the bride is? I can be the bride, says Worm. I can too, says Worm. See that? It's got the veil on. One's got the dress on. I like this. I like this. I like where it's going. But one of you has got to be the groom. How can I be the best beetle, asks Beetle Shane. I can be the groom, says Worm. I can too, says Worm. We can both. We can be both. Amazing, says Spider. Really, asked Beetle Shane and the bees. But yes, look. See, it's got a veil on and a tux. Top hat and a dress. Got their rings. We're good to go. We're good to go. Wait, says Cricket. That isn't how it's always been done. Then we'll change how it's always been done, says Worm. Yes, says Worm. Right? And so they were married, because Worm loves Worm. The end. Yes, that's a great book. Talking about uh, change, right? In this world that we live in. In this beautiful world that we live in. With a lot of the craziness that's going on. I still think it's important to remember that change can be beautiful. So to embrace change. Because no matter what. Something. Something beautiful is always on the other side. So change is fine. It can be scary. It doesn't have to be. So embrace it. Do what you can. Make change. Be happy with change. And go with the flow. Live each day because that's all we have is today. Whoa, I think I just got on a soapbox a little. I didn't mean that at all. But change is not something to be scared of. So I just want to say that. We will figure this out. We're all in this together. It's going to be a brave new world when we come out of it. 
and it's going to be beautiful. We're going to make it that way. So hug those you love when you can. Um, and if you can't, give them a long distance hug. Sending hugs out to all of you and my big sister. I love you guys immensely. Um, I hope to see you guys here back on Tuesday at Storytime with Shane. Uh, so Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays, and Sundays, 3 p.m. on Instagram and Facebook Live. Um, as well, posted to YouTube later. I still haven't got yesterday's up yet, so I'll do the two. So there'll be two on there, so that'll be good. Um, as well, those of you who don't know, I'm in my... I'm in a show tomorrow. Um, it's World Online Pride. I'm very excited uh, about it. Thank you, Jody. I'm very excited and very, very, very nervous. Not so much about the performing, although I am nervous about that. More about the technology end of it. So I hope that I don't screw it up. But I hope to see some of you there. So World Online Pride. Uh, check it out. If you don't follow them, like them now. They're doing live shows. They've been doing it since Friday. And tomorrow's our last day. It's been great from all over the world. Uh, the person who got in contact with me was from Spain. So that's amazing. And they asked me to be a part of the show. Um, so that's great. So I've got great enter entertainers lined up. I've got Ivana Kadabra. I've got uh, Brad Diesel. I've got Addie Pose, who is my drag baby, who lives out here in Okotoks, who's 17 years old. Phenomenal. You must check them out. Then there's me. And then my best friend, the wonderful Miss Angelina Starchild, to close up the set. So provided all the tech goes right, I will record it just in case so that I can post it later. But provided all the tech goes right, this will be live across the world and we'll have watchers from all over. I'd love to see you guys some uh, in there giving out positive vibes to the YYC talent. Because we have a huge talent pool and this is only some of them. And there's lots of great shows out there. Next weekend I'm doing Twisted Element. Before that, not at Twisted Element, it'll be live. So yeah, if you if you don't follow Twisted Element, you should. That, but before that, Thursday night, I have Cyberstash with a bunch of great performers on there as well. It's Zoom. Um, check that out. Uh, it'll be on Facebook as well. We, we put up the meeting room that night. I, I, I think it's still doing Zoom. I'm not positive, but watch for our Facebook information. I will share it. Keep your eyes peeled for that. So that's Thursday night. So those are, that's my, this week, it's going to be a busy week for me, which is weird because I'm really not going anywhere, but it's going to be a busy week and just what I need. So I'm looking forward to it and nervous all in the same respect. All right. Before we finish up, I know you guys like to see my eyes. I don't know if you will be able to, but let's give it a try. So today I'm going to start with Facebook. Then I'll come over to you guys on Instagram. So today this right here is called Supernatural, and it's from the Supernatural show. And then this one is called Storm, and it's from Storm, from the comics. Now to show Instagram so they can see. So in this eye, I don't know if you can see, it's blue and red, and it's from Supernatural. And then in this eye is black and yellow, and that is Storm. Storm's Contact. And you can get these contacts through Primal Contacts. Uh, you can order them online through the costume shop. Again, another plug for the costume shop. Um, I do want to go back to work. I, I think it's too soon to be going back, but um, I'll do what I have to. So when that does happen, I will go back there. But in the meantime, it would be great to support them. Local business. They are owners. They live right in Calgary. So check out the costume shop online. You can order online, do curbside pickup, or have it delivered. So thanks for tuning in. Peace out, people. We'll see you soon. Love y'all.